All right. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome. Right on time today, and I remembered remembered my coffee. Uh, so we're off to a good we're off to a good start. The market's not necessarily off to a good start, but I'm off to a good start, and I'm in a good I'm in a good mood today. I'm taking this I'm taking this red. I think as a bit of an opportunity. So I did do a deposit today. I wasn't planning on doing it, but I figured probably as good a day as any. Take advantage of of this uh, of this anti. Uh, anti Santa rally that we're not, I don't think we're going to get this year. Anyways, uh, for people that are watching, we'll get into who is rolling in. The regulars will say hi, but before we start off with that, if you're joining us on the replay, I just want to let you know that we do live streams every Monday to Friday, go on about 8 a.m. Pacific time, go to 8.45. So it'd be great to have you join live. If you, uh, if you are new to the stream and you're watching, don't be afraid to say hi. It's a good group of people. We talk about Canadian investing. We talk about some news. We get sidetracked on all sorts of other topics from time to time. It's always a good fun. It's a good way to start the morning or afternoon, depending where you are. So on, on that note, let's, let's see who's, um, let's see who's here today on this, uh, Thursday. It's Thursday today, one more day till Friday. And, as you saw kind of coming in before the stream started, it's Christmas spirit, got the Christmas fireplace up. So something a little different there. And uh, Christmas is almost here. It's kind of hard to believe, but uh, it looks like uh, it's the time of year. We have the Christmas fireplace running. And uh, Candace, good morning. Always good to have you here. I always uh, appreciate it uh, tuning in. That's uh, that's great. I enjoyed your video, Candace, on your, like behind the curtain of your, I always enjoy those ones, seeing your portfolio. Um, uh, when you share that on your on your stream, it always kind of gives me some ideas to look forward to. But also, you know, there's a, there's one or two in there I think that I have, so I'm kind of like, okay, I'm not doing all not doing all all bad here. So it's always good. Um, I do appreciate it. If people haven't uh, checked that one out yet, Candice did a video earlier this week sharing her entire uh, TFSA on Well Simple as well. We all, I don't I don't know not everybody uses Well Simple, but Candice and I have Well Simple. Uh, Stan, always good to have you. Morning and good morning all. And we've got a new uh, Serial First. This is your first time, I think, here. If I first time at least chiming in. So welcome to the channel, Serial First. I did have my cereal oatmeal is what I have for my breakfast every morning. I don't like it necessarily. It's easy. I can put it on. It fills me up. And uh, I have oatmeal. That's my that's my morning oatmeal and coffee. And Jason, good morning. Coffee time too. Excellent, excellent. MC, thanks for joining us. You made it. You made it on time. <laughs> Always good to have you here. I always appreciate everybody that's uh, that's tuning tuning in. And Sean as well. I think this is another maybe another visitor. Sorry, Sean, if I, if you've been on before, I yeah, I'm bad. I sometimes get bad with memories with names because so many people do show up. But it's great to have you here. Thanks for tuning in in the morning. It's always good to have. Um, it's always good to go on a stream and there's people. <laughs> That's a good a good sign. So there we go. So I got a few things a few things to start off. Obviously, I talked about just at the very beginning. I did do a purchase today. The market, um, you know, rates. We were expecting rates to go up. The market yesterday was looking pretty good, and then as soon as the rate announcement kind of came, wasn't looking so good. Uh, and I think people are everything's getting uh, digested into everything now. Uh, and we're seeing that today. So not looking not looking great today. But again, I mean, I can speak for myself. I'm a long long term investor in my TFSA. So I just exactly took a little bit of uh, opportunity to add to the add to the positions that I that I have. I will share that on my screen. Um, and also, we were talking a little bit briefly yesterday about because there's the the split between the split of Brookfield Asset Management. So what actually showed up. I got the new finally so i got the new sorry the old one turned into called B, bn and then there's the the new the new the split off is bam so that finally showed up in my in my tfsa this morning so i've got a fractional share of well i've got it was always kind of fractional but i've got i've got bn now and i've got bam so there we go i don't know what one yet i'll be continuing to invest in as part of that one year challenge i'll figure that out as we go but so it's kind of like it's split and it's all there. So whether I sell one, I might just kind of hang on to one and then put the rest of the put the rest of the regular regular deposits into um, the original one. I'm thinking that's what I'll do to keep it kind of how it was originally. I don't know. Well, that may change, but we'll we'll figure that out. And if hopefully if, if as more kind of as we see as I see kind of more maybe what happens, that will kind of direct me in that direction. So 
just wanted to give everybody an update on that on what happened because I know a few people had commented about having that split and it takes a few it takes a couple days obviously it took four days for it to kind of show up in your in your wealth symbol account so there we go so what uh oh good morning twisted pretzel stick that's a good name that's so funny welcome welcome to the stream hey it's always good it's good to have new new visitors we've got kind of a food theme of new visitors today uh breakfast cereal and uh, pretzels go figure but good to have you here that's awesome uh so what did i buy today what exactly did i buy uh so here we go I, i've shared this already on my community tab uh if anybody bought me has bought anything today you know i know there's a few people that like the red and the, some of the bears you know the bear invest, bear investor is one of them probably will chime in later on a comment but uh if you have bought anything shoot it in the comments it's always kind of Kind of interesting to see what uh, what ha what uh, what's happening, what people are thinking. Um, Tesla. So Tesla is one that I've been wanting to just kind of slowly add. Uh, Elon sold a bunch of his, uh, well, a lot of his uh, of his Tesla share, so that kind of accounted for I think the, the price drop. Uh, so it's it's getting hammered, um, but it's actually I think one of the only ones that is green today. Go figure. And so I took an opportunity. I just purchased. Uh, this is the CDR, mind you. So as you can see there, uh, five, I did five. I, pur I purchased five shares. Of the, that CDR, and uh, so added to the portfolio, which is good. That's again long. I'll hold that one long term as well. Uh, I can scroll along here. Uh, SOT.UN. I haven't bought this one in a while. Uh, I do like the dividends that come on this one. It's a slate office REIT, uh, and you can't quite see the the number there. I don't know why. I don't know why. Uh, well, simple always seems to cut off that square. But the cost of that, I can look here. What it what it was. Uh, look at my computer it cut it off it was like four dollar i think it was four dollars and forty cents if i remember it's kind of annoying that it cuts off that last trade but uh was able to buy uh, sh uh, shares of that how many did i buy of that i can't my memory holy cow i have to double check and look on my on my uh, in my app here uh, so i can uh, actually remember um sot the price the price of uh, Four dollars forty-one cents, and I purchased uh, twenty shares of SOT. Uh, so that was that was added to the portfolio. So that's nice dividends regular on that one. That's uh, coming through, which I like pays monthly dividends. And I did buy a share of the channel favorite. I bought one share of Telus. Uh, this one came through the price twenty-seven fifty-one. So okay with that. And the last one I bought, I had a little bit left over uh, in after all those trades and I did a purchase, it's a, fra a fractional uh, a fractional purchase of VFE. Uh, how much did I put in it? Let me double check so we can keep uh, $8.79 in a fractional share of VFE. So that's what I purchased today. I'm so kind of happy about that, adding it on there. And uh, that's my, that was my deposit. I wasn't expecting to, to deposit. Um, uh, yeah, there we go, but it's, it's in there now and it's done. Um, and so MC is looking at Tesla CDRs. There you go. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, I, it's one of the news articles I pulled up actually, uh, MC. So we'll get, we'll, we can might kind of maybe get to that. Um, uh, so you own the U S listed equities while back, but have moved everything back over to Canadian. So looking at CDRs, yeah, Canadian hedged. Um, I'd like the CDR cause it's almost like it's, I don't have the U.S. account MC in well simple. I mean, obviously you can buy U.S. shares if you don't have that, but you pay the conversions and all that kind of you know all that kind of stuff. I don't have that. I don't pay for the the extra extra account for U.S. dollar funds. And it's um, the CDR is nice because it's nice. It's a, it's obviously a smaller. You can do fractional shares, but it's a smaller amount. It's, it seems a bit more attainable, you know. So for investing that way. Um, that's kind of why I have chosen those four and with the Canadian hedge as well. Just my uh, choice on that one. Uh, there we go. So, oh, perfect, perfect timing. Well, I, I only bought I only bought one share, but uh, tell us deep dive on over on Candace's channel. So there we go. You can catch that up. Don't go now. Go after the live stream and check that out for uh, for that. I'm gonna go watch that. I'll watch that after this, uh, Candace. Awesome. Thanks. I appreciate that. Tell us is always a pop a popular one uh, to want to uh, to build up and. Um, and Brian, there we go. Good morning. Welcome. Uh, yeah, that's I've read in that and I, it's totally lost my mind. You can maybe you can maybe um, if people want to know what that is, you can Google that. There's a way to do that. And it's yeah, I, I can't explain it. I know kind of what it is, but, but it's completely lost my mind, lost my uh, that kind of um, that kind of way of doing it. 
uh, but on that note, on on that note of uh, CDRs and Tesla and whatnot, that was one of the articles I was going to pull up. So I might as well pull that one up. Might as well pull that one up first, because uh, obviously Tesla, sorry, Elon selling his selling his um, uh, his shares, obviously to pay for what he purchased in Twitter, obviously he needs money, right? So I guess that's part of the reason uh, to pay off some of the debt, the debt from the debt from buying, buying Twitter. And whether you feel that's better or worse, I don't know. But uh, Kathy Wood is, was, so Elon was a big seller yesterday and it looks like Kathy Wood bought, bought most of them up. Uh, so she, she, she did invest in, she's a big, uh, she's a big supporter of Tesla. Uh, she's definitely bullish on Tesla. She picked up uh, a lot more shares than I did. Uh, and obviously the actual, you know, ones that trade on the NASDAQ, but uh, not a CDR, uh, 74,862 shares of Tesla yesterday. Uh, purchase value around 11.7 million based on yesterday's um, yesterday's price. So uh, it actually breaks down here. Uh, uh, Elon sold almost 22 million uh, almost 22 million shares, $3.6 billion worth over the past uh, past three days. So interesting there. Um, but uh, Kathy has always a big, been a big, uh, big, big supporter uh, and uh, really likes a Tesla. So um, there we go. So that's where that's where all of Tesla, that's where all of Elon's Elon shares went to uh, a lot of them went to Kathy. <laughs> And there we go. Yeah, Nor Norbit's Gambit. Buy a dual t listed ticker the same. Yeah, sell on the same. There you go. Beyond my scope, but if you if, if people are wondering what that is, if you Google that, there's actually a very good explanation so that are longer than that that sentence. I know YouTube obviously limits what you have to see what you can put in the put in the chat. But thanks for sharing that. Always uh, always appreciate it. So there is that's Tesla, and uh, I guess a few people are looking to buy. If anybody else bought any bit, uh, bought anything else, always uh, drop them in the comments. It's always good to hear. It's always good to hear. Have some maybe some positive in in the red. You know, it's if I think it's good. I think it's I it kind of take this as maybe a bit of op opportunity. Obviously, my deposit wasn't huge, but every little bit counts in the long run. Uh, so let's get into a bit of Canadian news. Actually, uh, we've all been talking about well, we've been talking about rates for rates for a while now. So this one popped up in my in my stream this morning and also on uh, on Twitter. And there's a couple of articles on Canadian housing. So uh, probably the best way. I mean, I guess the, maybe not everybody knows this, but when you're trying to qualify for a mortgage, they have something that's called like a stress stress test rate. Uh, and uh, the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions, OSFI, uh, sets, says that the minimum qualifying rate uh, for a mortgage has to be either greater of the mortgage contract rate plus 2% or 5.25%. So essentially right now rates, like say if a fixed rate is, they're, they're close, to, I think they're on 6% some places, right? So if you are trying to get a mortgage and your interest rate is, six percent on the mortgage you have to qualify based on eight percent so two percent plus of that contract um so it's harder to qualify right that essentially what what it ha what it what uh, what's ha what's happened and the stress test has been out for 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 a number of years uh it used to only used to be basically the contract rate obviously it's the contract rate plus two percent or 5.25 but because rates were so low the stress test was basically 5.25 percent for the majority of people so it's getting harder to qualify for a mortgage obviously prices Houses prices are still high, but mortgage rates with all these rate increases are, are a lot higher. Uh, so they haven't changed. They kind of, I guess, meet, I think it's once a year, they kind of meet in December and kind of uh, adjust that uh, adjust that um, benchmark rate if, if needed. And they've made no change. So uh, they haven't made, uh, there's been calls, I think, from industry to, to, to lower that, to make it a bit more, uh, of, you know, easier to qualify for for things but uh, they've said basically no so there is uh there's that that's no uh easier now there was one article kind of been relating to that uh, into housing and we will bring that one up and then i'll get you to your comments mc i've got those in there don't uh don't we will get there uh let's bring this up I wish I could have 
articles ready to go, but it doesn't let you do that with Streamer anyways. It would make things easier having to wait for me to click around back and forth. But uh, Canadian, Canadian home prices grinding lower as winter freeze. I love these headlines, right? It's like doom and gloom. Uh, Canadian home prices grind lower as winter freeze grips market. I, I love to meet the people that write these headlines sometimes, but it's uh, it's, so it's kind of funny. Uh, it's always quieter. I think as a lot of people know, Christmas season, right? Not a, not a lot of people selling houses anyways, usually in the winter. I think people that sell in the in the wintertime are probably very motivated. I think that's kind of the thing. And a lot of not a lot of people want, you know, open houses and people tramping through their, you know, coming through their house during the Christmas season because they're, you know, the houses are decorated. They've got other things going on. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of stuff going. But home prices have fallen. This is across Canada. So obviously different markets are going to be different different uh you know but on average uh it's, they're basically saying Canadian home prices fell for the ninth straight month so going back um not a I don't think really a big surprise here um buyers it's just harder as we go back to rates right rates have gone up benchmark rate is higher it's just harder and harder to qualify so prices have to come down uh, because of people's obviously incomes haven't as we're seeing you know we know with inflation is you're not you're not getting raises the same uh so the benchmark price benchmark Benchmark price in Canada fell to uh, 1.4% in November. So we're kind of getting month over month decreases on that. Uh, and it's so cumulatively, it's, uh, it's uh, from February. It's like the peak of the market. Same was back in February of this year. Uh, down 11.5% on average. So that's across across the board in Canada. So interesting there. Uh, so transactions are slowing down. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the in the obviously in the spring always you know spring market always maybe maybe but i guess i'm thinking this year probably not not the same not the same but again if rates are more expensive people have to redo their mortgages people with variable rate mortgages everything is obviously their rates have gone up the payments are going up i mean there might be some people that are having to sell um whether that's a huge a huge number of people i have no idea but uh um it's obviously something to kind of look at. I don't know if anybody's looking to buy a house or anything like that, but uh, I'm I'm certainly not. But it's um it's interesting to kind of be able to kind of keep keep an eye on that because obviously housing in Canada was a big uh, big part of the big part of the GDP. So with all the industries around that and everything else, so we'll see how it how it how that pans out in the spring. But uh, obviously no no signs of it springing back like going crazy again which is probably a good which is probably a good thing i think it, obviously the housing prices were so expensive especially at certain places like toronto and vancouver it's just craziness people i don't know how people people can afford it. it's expensive you know they've always it's always been expensive but it got really expensive and then also with the rates going up it's just impossible right so prices kind of have to slowly grind down and see, I've got your comments. There we go. So, Arc in the No episode the other day, and I was thinking how funny uh, is that, Kathy? Yeah, she does. She kind of goes through that. She's like Elon Musk a little bit too. She goes through the, you know, if 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 because with all with their, her investments, right? If it's people love people love people when everything's when everybody's making money and going up, but as soon as it's going down, you're their worst enemy. Uh, and her philosophies and stuff. I've I've watched a few in, interviews with her. Um, her philosophies haven't really changed. She's not changing her mind on anything, um, but I, I think I think what happened, MC, with a lot of that, with, like with her investments. I mean, obviously, in 20, 2020, 2021 investments, you could buy anything, and it would go up, right? So it was kind of like people people start to probably would would see chasing that type her type of investments can see the huge, we'd see these huge gains, right? Lots of pharmaceuticals, lots of tech, uh, definitely lots of, lots of, of volatility, right? And volatility is great when it's going up, but when it's going down, you have to have, be able to be able to handle that. So yeah, she, um, she, she, people, people get angry. Um, but again, it's people's, I think, own responsibility to, to research what they're investing in, know what they're investing in and, be okay especially with i mean especially with her the arc um you know those arc a lot of the a lot of those etfs are extremely involatile industries so you can't blame her um and i think she lays that out there um but we'll see what happens in you know a lot the long term i think she's probably on the right track um, but uh, I don't own any, obviously, of the ARC ETFs. There is a couple people on the channel on there that have bought, that have left comments that they've bought a couple of the 
the ARC uh, ETFs that they hold. Obviously, do do research what you're wanting to buy, you know. But uh, she she's like she's inter she's she's really interesting to listen to for sure. Uh, she's been on a f I've, I've I've listened to a few few podcast kind of interviews and stuff with her on her on um, uh, YouTube. Uh, she is very interested, very smart person. So um, yeah, uh, she's also very bullish on bullish on Bitcoin, which I kind of like. So that's, that's a good thing. So follow her for that way. She does, she, you know, she's, her predictions might be way out to lot, way out over, over predicting, but uh, who knows, but definitely worth, you know, if not, if not investing in any of her funds or anything like that is she's, she's definitely an interesting person to listen to uh, in an interview. So yeah, although nothing's changed except for the ETF stock price uh, fan. Yeah. That's exactly it. The, the the types of investments are definitely boom. You know, when they boom, they boom. When they bust, they bust. But and if you can ride out that uh, that volatility long term, that's I think the pro that's I think maybe the problem with a lot of investors. That, you know, MC or people watching is they everybody wants to make money, and you want it faster than you. You have to be patient. That's one thing I've really learned over the last couple of years of starting my 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 TFSA is just be patient. That's the biggest. That's one of the biggest biggest hurdles you know and and don't make rash decisions on stuff and if it's down it's okay look at look at maybe opportunities that kind of thing um it's definitely a learning experience but patience is patience is certainly the key and and again like i mean we we're not picking on we're not picking on arc or kathy but don't put all of your eggs in one basket and don't invest anything anywhere that you can't afford to possibly lose right that's kind of the the, the like go back to the basics right golden back to the golden rules of uh, of things and uh yeah mc so back on the osfi comment that's right they they basically told the, the big banks to uh increase their capital buffer for potential for potential loan losses going forward uh and bmo yeah bmo has to uh, is basically issuing more shares to uh, buff that i think they're wanting to get about three if i remember correctly we were talking about the other day three billion if i'm not mistaken 3.1 billion or something like that they're trying to raise um yeah so that's obviously they're preparing for the preparing for the worst hopefully it doesn't happen but and yeah real estate if we reach a fire sale and put in real estate we'd be interested in possibly picking up investment property that's that's the thing people that you know we obviously don't want you you, you can you can you can follow you know you can follow the bear the, the big bears of the of the Canadian real estate market on Twitter and stuff. And they, you know, people wanting it to go crash down like crazy. We don't want it that we don't want that to happen. Um, the problem with that is a, the biggest thing to watch is employment, right? I mean, people, people in Canada generally pay their mortgages on time. The only thing that really impacts that is if they're not working. Uh, and, you know, we, when we talk about, you know, BMO with doing, you know, having to raise their capital buffer and the other other financial institutions as well. Um, that's not just for mortgages, but it's for other other types of other types of debt too, right? But in general, people with their mortgages, they're going to pay those as though, you know, they'll, they'll default on other other things first, right? Or they'll, or they'll use other forms of debt to pay their mortgages before, before that gets the case. So I, I don't necessarily think we'll see the fire sale. I hope not, because that would be bad, right? Obviously people are waiting on the sidelines, but again, if no one's working and no one's, it, it's hard, you know, it's really hard to know. Um, I think the problem with Canadian real estate too, is people were treating it as an invest, like, as an investment, right? But I mean, obviously, real estate is an investment, but maybe a little bit too much. And I think a lot of the like, it's almost like it got into the the territory of like FOMO, you know, with people people snapping up investment properties when they probably shouldn't have been, uh, re bringing the prices up, right? Refinancing their existing homes to take out equity because the prices have gone up so much. Taking out equity to buy a rental property, and it's um, it yeah. It's like any investment you'd have to do your research right and i think probably a lot of people didn't fully do their research right uh think about think about people that refinance their home and put it on a line of credit that was a home like uh and the interest the prime rate has, has sky like skyrocketed right all of a sudden your rental investment you paid for with your line of credit the interest rate on your line of credit is like up over double 
And if you've rented it out, you can't raise your rent that much. So if you're not cash flowing, it's tough. But anyways, obviously, like anything, do your research, make sure it make sure it makes money. People weren't people, it seemed like people weren't buying buying rentals as an as an investment more for like if you break it down as an investment, you want to make money on it, right? But they would be buying it with the hopes of the appreciation of it. Like it was gonna go on forever, which as we know, nothing can go up and up and up and up forever. So we're seeing we're seeing that now. But We'll, we'll see the spring will be telling probably to see what happens you know because that's when a lot of people mostly start to list but i don't think it'll i don't think necessarily be fire sale stuff mc i hope hope, hope not that wouldn't be good for any i don't think that'd be good for anybody um and i think the market will still i think it's just kind of gone back down to normal you know people still have to move people still have to move for jobs people still need to upsize their home because their family's growing or downsize their home because they're getting older so the, the thing the thing will carry on so and uh, back, yeah, the 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 ARK ETFs in a bull in a bull in a bull market will definitely be would definitely look good. Um, it's it's I think getting to the getting to getting the patience to be able to hold it on that up to there. You know, that's like anything. People just aren't patient maybe uh, with things um, and just have to uh, stick it stick it out um, over the long the long term. That's what I'm learning. Is like long term seems to you know seems to work uh, work the best. Um, in your in your in your portfolio and on like on that note i'm still i've actually like i talked about yesterday i'll be doing the regular i'm going to be doing the regular deposits now on uh vdy so i'm going to be doing that starting in the new year i'll do i'll do every week uh deposits on that just a dollar cost average and start growing throughout the year um that's my kind of goal for the year to get that uh to get that started as well on uh on there and then hopefully when the when the bull market comes back we'll all be we'll all be we'll all be smiling hopefully because we've stuck it out through this like seems like it's been a year it's been a year of kind of you know basically almost kind of a year of of uh of not the not the greatest it's starting to come come back a little bit but then we get days i mean you can't count to like one days in the whole big picture really as much right kind of learning that for me as well is to not uh don't sweat the days that are that are bad just carry on with the plan i mean look look at the big picture yeah she she is what is was yeah pretty sure um she was a ho household names um for sure uh she um yeah i mean i think it, 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 she'll she'll come back if she's right right it's kind of like it, 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 she'll she'll people people have short memories right so they'll be mad now but then once once things once things shift they'll be she'll be like their best you know like their best friends again people have short short-term memories i think with things um yeah and that's what they would do right i'm, I'm not i don't know I, I mean i have my friend rob works in real estate in uh, ontario so he would know more about kind of the ontario market and stuff but uh they, a lot of them were like because you would buy a house and you know, a month later, it would be up 10% or whatever, right? So that's not a bad necessary. That's not a, that's not a good way to kind of consider real estate because it's not as, you know, it's not as liquid. It's not as, um, you know, there's costs involved to dispose of it with realtor fees. And obviously if it's an investment, there's tax implications as well to be aware of. Um, and I think a lot of people, like you could, you could look at it a lot of times and go, okay, my, my mortgage payment is X, my, my rent is Y uh it doesn't it doesn't necessarily make sense right um <clears throat> but you would need and that's the thing you would need a, a, and especially with prices right with prices you would need a ton of capital up front to be able to make it actually make sense to, to cash flow and then at the time i mean smart investors were probably looking at other things to, to to put their money into that was maybe more liquid and actually would um would give a bit of you know a bit better return um, it's when the market, it's like anything once, once, like once I, I mean, it's kind of sounds cliche, but it's like when you go, if, if you're going to the, all of a sudden, if you're going to, I don't know, get your hair cut and the, the hair, not to pick on hairdressers by any means, but like in the hairdressers talking about wanting to buy, wanting to buy a, another rental property and her clients, you know, it, as soon as it kind of shifts to the everyday narrative, it's almost like kind of like time, you know, it's kind of like, okay, this is probably the probably the peak you know when people start investing in things that they probably should shouldn't necessarily be investing in taking an unnecessary unnecessary uh a risk 
Um, because if you're, especially if you're borrowing, like that's the thing we always talk about. We always talk about like, don't, don't use leverage to, you know, don't, don't use leverage to, to invest, right? And, you, you know, if you're investing in your TFSA, it's, it's always riskier to use leverage, but that's exactly what people were doing to purchase essentially a rental property, you know, with, by refinancing their own or occupied home and uh, where they live and getting a line of credit or whatever they did. Right. So just to be careful, uh, investing doesn't always go up as people are learning. Right. Um, and rates aren't always, I mean, we never thought rates would be this low back for so long. And then we never thought they would go this high this quickly as well. So this is what's, uh, it's, uh, it's time. I think people getting wake up calls, you know, exact with, with that, we talked about it a lot, uh, on, on that note of investing, uh, talking about ETFs and everything else. I, I, this, this, I, I had a, um, uh Oh, so Nadia's sick. Hopefully, hopefully you feel better. Nadia. Thanks. Thanks for watching though. Tune in when you're sick. <laughs> have a good, uh, have a good day. Thanks for at least saying hi. Appreciate it. Yeah, I don't know really the prices, what they're like in Toronto. I think it's pretty comparable to probably Vancouver stuff, and it's just crazy. Um, but yeah, and of course, if you took if you took thir thir you know, 35 or 40% down payment of a condo or whatever you're buying, and if you're not going to necessarily get the, and that's just, and that, and you're just going to break even. And I think we can probably say Canadian real estate probably is not going to appreciate like it did. I could be completely wrong, could go crazy next year, but who knows? I don't, I don't, I don't think so just with the way the rates are. Uh, but if you're not making any, I mean, you're paying down your mortgage slowly. So you're making that back, but you're really not appreciating any kind of value. Again, any kind of, uh, any kind of investment in the market, you might not be appreciating much value in the same time frame. hard to know. Um, but you're also not getting any return if you're, I don't know. Like that's the thing you could put, you could put, <laughs> you can put 40% if it's sitting in cash right now. This was, and this is what a lot of people are doing. This kind of brings me to my next article I was going to share. Actually, it's a good transition, but you could put it into something that's more secure. A GIC paying, you know, some of these are paying like 5% on a G on a GIC plug, your, plug your cash in there. You're guaranteed and, and no, no worry, you know? Um, so I think that's what a lot of people are probably starting, starting to do. Uh, I know GICs are very, very popular. And on that note, I just popped up on my popped up my newsfeed. It was just a short video. So I thought I'd, I thought I would actually dig into it to see how much it was true. And I, I was it, it was it was a it was in the United States. So obviously, it might not be quite the same, quite the same in Canada, but I did find it interesting uh, with how people are here. We'll pull this up. How people are 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 searching. So this was in Google. So Google Trends is a, if you don't know Google Trends, if you, it's like trends.google.com is a, it's a website, Google website where people, you know, and it, it tracks all the searches. And the, the little news article that popped up is the trending searches for bonds versus stocks are on the rise in the past, for the past three months. It's kind of interesting how, 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 and again, like we're talking, like even with, like we go back to talking about Kathy Woods and stuff like that. Like this is the sentiment of the market, right? People are, people aren't necessarily wanting to invest in riskier, riskier equity. So as you can see here, this is a map of the United States. So the past 90 days, the interest over time of the red, the red is bonds, blue is blue is stocks is bonds are actually, as you can see the breakdown in the, in the breakdown here uh, of the United States, bonds are actually not a lot higher, but in the past, you can see all the red here. They're over the searches for, for stocks. Uh, and actually, if you go back, you know, basically like past, if we go back longer, like a longer period of time, it'll switch. Um, and you can actually see, uh, in the past 12 months. So in the past, basically like three months or so, the, the searches in general, like stocks, it, it's, it's completely it's completely uh, uh turned on its side so i find i found that very uh kind of interesting on how people's uh you know investment obviously bonds haven't done that great either if you if you do in if you do have bonds uh invested but they're obviously i think long term supposed to be a bit more a bit more safe than safe than uh, than equities uh and obviously there's i guess people thinking now obviously the yields are better then it's time to buy them I don't know. I don't have in my TFSA. I don't have any bond, any any um, any um, 
any bonds, but in my, in my, um, other invest side, I have a, a portion in, in bonds. So I, I found that interesting how, how the searches kind of, kind of show the mark, you know, the sentiment of the market a lot. And I've noticed a lot in my, and I don't know if Candace is still watching, if she's noticed it, I've noticed it obviously by doing live streams and going on, there's, there's more visitors and stuff coming, but I'm noticing on my, on the channel, the subscribers aren't like going up, 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 up as much. Whereas when the market was, was like, we're investing was obviously people as, as you know, if it's going up, more people are interested in these things. Uh, so it's that, that part is kind of slowed down. It might be partly the time of year, uh, December, maybe people aren't thinking as much of putting, putting money into a TFSA or whatever, for whatever reason. But I, I just do find that interesting. Um, the view of obviously views are, go, views are still continuing kind of on, but the subscriber and that's kind of seems to be, seems to be uh, leveled, uh, leveled out. We'll see. Uh, Long-term equities, they do, right? If you're average, if you, that's the kind of thing, if you could look at it, like say the S&P, putting something in, in the S&P ETF consistently over a long period of time, um, you will um, you will outperform. Um, but bonds are less volatile in general, um, usually, uh, not so much maybe now, but um, but it is, it's like you said, yeah, I just kind of, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, um, it's super, it's, it, we're in, I'm like, it's a different it's definitely a, a weird year it's been a weird, i think and i think if you can get through this year and maybe into coming into next year um uh it's um yeah we'll we'll see what happens but yeah usually because usually like what the recommendation like the old school recommendation is like 60 40 60 40 split 60 percent equities 40 percent bonds for an average portfolio right um and uh those portfolios this year bonds not doing good equities not good. nothing it's not so it's kind of like it's um it's definitely not common because usually like equities will drop but bonds will go up and vice versa and it evens itself out so there's no there's been no no safe space this year um unfortunately so on this on the yeah not as fast that's the thing it's like if it's a if it's a you know bull rally market definitely more people jump on that on that band on that band bandwagon so just found, I just found that interesting as, as well. Um, and uh, Vic, you have to ruin the, ruin the, ruin the, we, yeah, I, I don't think uh, the Santa rally is going to happen, but we could wait till tomorrow. Who knows? Let's be optimistic. It's the season, but uh, yeah, I don't, uh, not looking good. <laughs> uh, and this would be a good question for the channel. Uh, if anybody's watching this to, ch uh, to, to chime in with a comment, curious to, uh, MC, always, I love your comments. They're great. Uh, curious to hear what sector people think will drive the market returns over the next five to 10 years. Uh, I'm not sure if it will be in traditional tech tech's been getting really hit obviously. Um, but maybe innovative companies and in other sectors. Yeah. Um, I think one that I'm maybe starting to kind of research a bit more is probably, I think when we look at would be, would be healthcare. Obviously, aging population. Uh, there might be some opportunity in that. Um, other than that, I mean, tech. Yeah, I mean, they're doing a lot of the thing is the thing is with tech and that. There, I mean, there might be some. I think maybe um, sector would be because a lot of the a lot of the. Um, companies now are like wanting to reshore right so reshoring manufacturing so if there's any kind of um you know if any kind of uh come on you know metals or something like that for industry maybe um but do chime in people it's always kind of interesting to see in the next 10 years yeah um i did have another article on on kind of on tech to share mc it's um was actually netflix i won't pull up the article but it was netflix because we know netflix had released their uh, subscriber or sub, like lower tier of subscription that would be ad supported. And I was reading an article this morning that it, and it, if you look at M Netflix's stock today, I mean, it's down, it didn't, uh, it's not doing, uh, it's not doing, uh, not doing well, not doing well at all. It's, um, it's down like, uh, seven and a half percent, uh, because they're basically what they were doing is actually Netflix is only delivering 
according to this this release not it's coming from it's kind of coming from Netflix but they're declining the comment on it but roughly they're getting 80% of the expected audience in that in that um, with advertisers so I found that interesting so other people aren't changing their they're obviously not getting new people signing up to that ad supported so they're maybe their subscriber base isn't growing mm -hmm. but also too it looks like probably people aren't maybe reducing their their subscription either so not good for advertisers not good for Netflix but um, there we go. Uh, and that's, that's the, uh, that's exactly on Netflix, Justin and welcome. Thanks. Always good to have you. They did lose his mode. Um, I mean, there's so many subscription things now, right? Disney plus, I think Disney plus is kind of the, that's kind of the winner. Right. And this is the thing with a lot of with tech is that it kind of goes like everything gets, you know, eventually goes, goes, I don't want to say goes to zero, but that's kind of what technology is supposed to do. Right. Get things cheaper and. So we'll see what we'll see what uh, what happens in, in the long term uh, with Netflix. The one thing with Netflix, I find they have been like I subscribe to Netflix and I'm kind of here nor there on it. I, I have it because I don't I don't have cable. So I do watch from time to time shows and movies and stuff on it. I'm not really a huge fan. Netflix does some very good shows, but the Netflix movies like usually for me kind of leave a lot to be desired. Um, that being said, there's some good. They do have some actually some decent foreign movies uh with you know so if you're into watching movies with subtitles there's some actually good some some decent foreign movies if you're into that if you're into those um but some of the some of the like us or what english movies are kind of like eh, here nor there um uh, on that one uh santa rally so, okay technical santa rally okay i think that's the thing i mean i think that's maybe maybe t people now they're taking the advantage i mean obviously we're in tax law right we're in tax loss uh season so that might be that we might kind of um, pump up after everybody's kind of done, done selling off. Um, and, uh, we'll see, see what happens. I don't know. I just took it. I mean, today, if you see a bit, of, I just took it at maybe as a bit of opportunity to add for me, as I mentioned earlier, just to add positions that I plan on holding for a long time. So Oh, there you go. So Vic, yeah. Someone speculated that maybe one day Disney may own Netflix. Yeah, you never know. Might not be too far off. Uh, I don't have a subscription to Disney Plus. Uh, I sometimes wish I do because I like Star Wars, but I just haven't bothered. So on tech, yeah, it it does it does top on the because it's yeah it tops on the bull runs. Uh, whatever the next invention is becomes really popular possibly meta metaverse stuff yeah the, the metaverse stuff is interesting i think it was probably not i don't say overhype that's the wrong word that's the wrong word uh justin but um there's obviously going to be some with everything coming out now like with ai uh you know and also we're going a lot more we're still doing a lot more virtual virtual meetings. I mean, I, I haven't been to a, a meeting in a, an actual like meeting in years, three years or so, I think, or more since I've been actually like to an in-person meeting, we do everything over zoom and everything now at, at work. So it's, um, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. I think they have to, but they have to kind of figure it out and it, it, it will, it will, it will ultimately come it's just figuring out what that actually is. It'll probably be in some form that we're not even imagining yet, you know, with what happens. That's simple. That's kind of what happens with, 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 um, uh, with tech. I mean, Apple hasn't really done anything with it yet. Um, I mean, Meta has their, they, they do have that new virtual reality thing, which actually looks pretty cool. But again, is it, not, is it going to be mainstream? Not yet. But I mean, before, I mean, you just have to give it some time. I mean, obviously, if we go back when we could, we can age ourselves and go back to when people didn't have computers and it didn't, it didn't take long eventually for people to everyone to have them, you know, and um, then obviously then on our phones and everything else. So we'll, we'll get there. It's just a matter of but what it will look like. I have actual, actually kind of uh, no, um, no, I, uh, no idea, but that's, that's the thing. So Apple, yeah, you're on MC. They haven't done anything yet. And they're obviously very quiet. I mean, we kind of, I mean, there's obviously rumors that they're developing something, but they haven't they haven't got it out there yet. Um, but I think it, if it if it was going to be a, a company that can probably do it, 
it's probably going to be, uh, I would say probably going to be Apple. Uh, they seem to have that. I mean, I use a Mac. I don't use a phone. I don't think they have necessarily the same. Well, they still do have the, they still do have the, the kind of following. Um, I don't think they have the same kind of, you know, like cult following they have as when Steve, Steve Jobs was still alive and running, you know, as in the company. Because uh, he was definitely a very, very good, good marketer uh, to get to get people uh, to buy products uh, and to buy things that they didn't think they didn't think they needed before that. Um, some of his old keynote presentations are very interesting and very, very, very good to watch. Uh, just the reactions from people and the the, the things that there's the the, the problems that they're, they're solving problem. They were solving problems that people didn't know they had, you know, and making new, making new industry out of that, which is, which is very interesting and not so much anymore. Um, I mean, obviously they have the phone, which they've been doing, but it's kind of like they haven't gone that much. They haven't hit that next kind of step yet to see what's, what's after a phone. Um, there's the watch. Um, I'm not, I don't have an Apple watch. I just have, a, I have, I'm like a, a regular watch person myself. Uh, but I don't like all the, all the notifications and stuff all the time. I don't need to have that on my watch. I just need to tell the time. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it, we'll see, we'll see what happens. They do have a definitely cool, cool uh, factor about it. Um, the watches are neat. Uh, I do, I do kind of, I've looked at them, but it's just not, they're not my, I have a watch I pay, you know, and I don't need a new watch. So that's kind of it. Plus I use, plus I use Android. So I don't have, um, I don't have, I don't have um, an iPhone to kind of connect it or whatever anyways. Um, so we'll see, but they, they, they are the, the, and the AirPods are supposed to be good. I don't use those as well because I, I, I will lose them. I, I use wired headphones. I'm still the old school. I have to use wired headphones because I will lose, I will lose my earbuds and they're expensive. So, so they are working on software called XROS. Okay, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see what they, um, what they, what they, what they do. MC for sure. And Justin, yeah, we we're talking as we say, like they, the the phone. It's like they've hit a. They haven't hit a brick. I mean, they're they're really advancing the cameras um, on them. That's one thing they have really really advanced. Uh, the quality of the cameras, the the AI within the cameras to, uh, you know, enhance pictures, that kind of thing. But I mean, I'm a camera person, and I, but I use a regular, you know, DSLR style old school camera, uh, which I enjoy. I don't, I don't enjoy taking pictures on my phone uh, just because um, I'm more into photography. Not that say that the phone cameras are bad, but I like to kind of, for me, if I if my phone didn't have a camera, I wouldn't even care, uh, because I I like to go take pictures to get away from a lot of tech you know a lot of technology that way and like away from distractions. Whereas if you're on your phone taking pictures, you you're, you know I, if you're sharing it for people, you're you're take, you're out of that moment. That's how I that's how I feel about it. But everybody's kind of different, but they do they do make good phones with good good cameras. Um, Tim Cook is uh, definitely. As a, he was, he was in charge of their, was it their supplies, like manufacturing and supply, I believe, uh, prior to taking on the role he's in now. Um, but um, he prior to that had a huge line of iPhone sales. Yes. So iPhone, sales, but yeah, they're more into like, well, the app, like with the app, they've created a whole, a whole market of apps, right? The app store was i mean and it started out it all it started off back when with the ipod if you go back you can go back in the history right and you look at look what the ipod was mp3s and then they released they had the ipod and then they had the the itunes store the music store which they still which they still have but that created a whole kind of new because people were stealing music right we'll, we'll date ourselves here talking about napster and everything else and downloading downloading free music and they switched the whole thing to make it to be able to buy singles and buy individual individual songs from from apple and created that ecosystem of of purchasing things virtually for your 
uh, ultimately on your phone from iPad to phone. And then when the phone, as the phone progressed, right, you, it started out with web apps that you would have on there, very basic stuff, right? And then the app store launched with apps. And now there's the whole, you know, um, the whole ecosystem of apps you can purchase. And also with the app store, they take, it's a percentage they take, right? 30%, I think it is. So a lot, but a lot of the stuff they do that people, you know, you buy an app or there's some apps that you, you pay, it's free, but you can unlock certain things by paying more subscriptions, all that kind of stuff. It's a whole ecosystem. It's, it's pretty amazing, pretty amazing what they actually, um, pretty amazing what they do. Yeah. We're, we did, I remember, you remember, I never, allegedly, allegedly, uh, Candace, allegedly they did. Um, they used to, the good old days when you had Napster and you'd run it and you had slow internet. So you'd have to run it all the time. Um, and that's why we fall transition to like subscription based software too, because people would download software, right? You download software and you run it on your computer for free instead of paying for the, you know, paying for the CD to buy and install. Um, and then you get all sorts of viruses and stuff. So it was, yeah, the, it was like the wild, the wild, wild west. So, um, it's interesting how Apple changed that kind of people were willing to pay 99 cents a song. And I, the, I think are the songs still probably 99 cents. It's been a long time since, since I bought, bought music. Um, it's, it's, it's funny how it goes now. It goes to streaming, right? This is interesting how tech, right. And it goes all of a sudden now, instead of buying 99 cents songs, you'll just go to Spotify or something else and, and stream and stream the song for free when you, when you want to play it instead of actually buying the, the actual record or digital copy of it, not record. I don't know what kids are buying these days. Uh, are they buying records, CDs, probably digital downloads too. I'm going to guess. There we go. All good. Uh, this has been a great stream today. I just looked at the clock. We're almost at nine o'clock. That's, that's awesome. It's always, uh, always a lot of, a lot of fun. Um, and uh, yeah, Vic, it's a sale. It's it's definitely a sale today. I don't I don't uh, you don't want to necessarily um, look at it both ways. You can look at it as a good a good um, a sale or whatever way you look at it. I always take it on the positive end, and, and uh, like I said, picked up a few a little bit a little bit of things in my TFSA. So it's a sale. So it's a it's a Christmas sale. We're not getting a Santa rally yet. Okay. We're getting the Christmas Christmas uh, Christmas sale, I guess. Anyways. Uh, so coming up to nine o'clock, uh, my day is going to start soon. I just want to thank everybody for joining on the stream. It's always, always appreciated. A few new, few new faces today, which was, which was awesome. So I do appreciate you spending the time jumping in and saying hi. Uh, on that note, uh, tomorrow being Friday, uh, I will not have a stream tomorrow. Uh, I have actually a meet, uh, appointment early in the morning. So I'm, I don't think I'll get back in time to start the stream. We'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm going to say probably no. Uh, so there won't be that on Friday. It's okay. We can take a day. We can take a day off. Um, you can always catch one of the replays or one of the other videos on the channel if you need your, if you need your fix, or I've got the fireplace log going on there. So you can, uh, you can watch the fireplace instead, uh, tomorrow, but, uh, so it won't be on, but we'll be back, uh, for sure next Monday, eight o'clock Pacific time. And, uh, I just, uh, have a, have a great day, everybody have a good, uh, have a good weekend. I will get the update to the, to the portfolio done, uh, and we'll get that up on the channel for you to watch. So you can kind of see my new purchases as well as how the portfolio is doing. Not that great today. Um, uh, but, uh, have a great, uh, have a great day, everybody. Thanks. Uh, thanks MC for always for your input. Candace, uh, Vic, Justin, uh, who else was here? Lots of people were here. Let's go back. Uh, we had Nadia. Thanks, Nadia. Uh, all the regulars were, uh, were here, Brian. Uh, and Jason and all the, uh, and all the new, new people. So do appreciate it. Thanks so much, everybody. We will, uh, we'll end with a bit of, uh, we got the Christmas fireplace. We'll end with that today and, uh, have a good, uh, have a good day. Have a good, have a good weekend.